Hola amigos, soy Jorge Campos, estamos en México y esto es PGA Tour Latinoamérica. Join us for a two week trek through Mexico. We start in Mazatlán with a look at the city's seafood industry. They don't have catfish that big in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> And Tyler McCumber gets his second win of the year. Hola, bienvenidos a México. Then we move east to Mexico City, where Alex Meaty from the band Moenia shows us one of his favorite spots. Lo importante, lo único importante aquí es venir con mucha hambre. Eso sí. And get some lessons on the links. Hey, how are you? Tyler, Tyler. I need some golf tips today. Ooh. All right, Ooh. you give me while Oscar Álvarez celebrates his first victory. Hola amigos, los saludo Luis García con muchísimo gusto. Bienvenidos, por supuesto, aquí a nuestro gran país, México. Esto es PJ Tour Latinoamérica. Besos. Esto es PJ Tour Latinoamérica. Along with beaches and sunshine, Mazatlan has the largest fishing port in Mexico. It's the center of the yellowfin tuna industry. Out of every 10 cans of tuna consumed in the country, six are produced here. Hola, yo soy Armando Villarreal de Los Mochis, México. I'm Kent Bull, Glasgow, Kentucky. Bienvenidos a Mazatlan, Sinaloa, México. Hoy les vamos a mostrar un poco sobre la industria pesquera, en especial el atún. Cómo funciona el proceso de enlatado. Muy bien. Bueno, estamos con el señor Carranza hoy. Es una planta procesadora de atún. Es una integración que tenemos los barcos, la procesadora, la industrializadora, las marcas. Hey Kent, I know you like to fish. Do you ever caught anything this big? No, oh, they, they don't have catfish that big in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> The Pinza facility can process as many as 1.8 million cans daily. General Manager Carlos Hernández gave Armando and Kent a guided tour. La segunda parte del proceso de producción, una vez que el pescado fue eviscerado y fue cocido, es el proceso de limpieza. El proceso de limpieza se ejecuta de manera manual. El pescado, ya que se limpió, que lo que aquí le conocemos como obtención de carne blanca, pasa por las líneas superiores hasta el siguiente proceso de producción, que es el enlatado. El enlatado a través de máquinas eh, automáticas eh, que pesan cada una de las latas, se le agrega la cantidad de carne que le corresponde. Ahí mismo se le agregan lo que le llamamos líquidos de cobertura. Eh, la mayoría de nuestras presentaciones son en 140 gramos y en 300 gramos. Eh, tenemos también una línea de pouch, es la tuna en bolsa. Eh, en esa tuna en bolsa tenemos también eh, diferentes especialidades. Esta ventana que está en ustedes aquí está lista para comer. Me gusta probarle y constatar. Perfecto, eh, a ver. Está buenísimo. Really good. Eh, la siguiente parte del proceso de producción es el esterilizado de las latas. Una vez que las latas ya fueron llenadas con el, el, la carne blanca del atún, con los líquidos de cobertura y se les colocó la tapa. Eh, pasan a un proceso de esterilizado en donde bajo cierta temperatura controlada un cierto tiempo, las latas adquieren la propiedad de ser una conserva y es donde ya se puede conservar en nuestras alacenas por cuatro años y conservando sus propiedades tanto nutrimentales como de inocuidad y de sabor. Y el último proceso de producción es el área de etiquetado en donde ya la lata esterilizada eh, se seca, eh, pasa por unas etiquetadoras que tienen la capacidad para etiquetar mil latas por minuto. Eh, esas latas se van formando en cajas o charolas eh, y ya forman parte de una tarima que va directamente al almacén de producto terminado. Muy bien, pues muchas gracias por mostrarnos sus instalaciones, cómo funcionan y todo el proceso de, de su negocio. Muchísimas gracias, señor Carranza. Muchísimas gracias. Thanks so much for taking me around. Thank you so much for opening up your facility you and showing much. us around. Yeah, thank you very much. 
The PGA Tour Latino America season continued with event number 11, the Trans-American Power Products CRV Mazatlan Open. It was played at the beautiful Estrella del Mar Golf Condos and Beach Resort on Mexico's Pacific Coast in the state of Sinaloa. The par 72 stretches slightly longer than 7,000 yards, with three of the closing holes playing along the ocean. The small greens and windy conditions made scoring very difficult. Argentina's Jorge Fernandez Valdez managed a bogey-free 67 in the second round to take the lead heading into the weekend. The 22-year-old made five birdies to move one ahead of his countryman, Julian Etulain. Es, es más que nada, bueno, saber que, que, bueno, que el viento va a influir mucho y es importante el, el, el approach en, este, en, este, en esta cancha porque, bueno, eh, siempre, siempre vas a tener eh, algún green, digamos que siempre vas a errar algún green, así que eh, creo que si, si tenés buen approach y pat esta semana, podés hacer una buena diferencia. The third round belonged to a familiar face. All you need is Ecuador Open champion Tyler McCumber. McCumber fired a 66 to take a one-shot lead at eight under par. Early in the final round, Jorge Fernandez Valdez made a charge, birdieing two of the first three holes. He then made birdies at 10 and 11 to post a score of 10 under par. Meanwhile, McCumber was holding steady. He got to 11 under par and seemed to be cruising to victory. But after a wild double bogey on the 17th hole, McCumber needed to birdie the par 4 18th just to force a playoff with Fernandez Valdez. I knew I'd birdied 18 every day this week, and there was no reason I you know, shouldn't try and do it again. McCumber and Fernandez Valdez headed back to the 18th hole for the sudden death playoff. I got first pull off the tee and I hit it within eight feet of my old divot. So I didn't even have to walk off a yardage. I hit the same club, obviously a little more pumped, so I hit it a little further, but it ended up being a pretty good spot on 18. Fernandez Valdez found himself in trouble after his second shot flew over the green. He chipped up for his third shot, but the ball ran well past the hole. McCumber had a 15-foot birdie putt that would have wrapped up the win. Though the effort came up short, it left a tap-in par. That meant Fernandez Valdez had to sink his par putt to play another hole. McCumber finished off the par in his second victory in three weeks. He jumped to number two on the order of merit, just one behind Colombian Marcelo Rosso in the battle for the top spot and full status on the Web.com tour in 2015. It feels great. You know, I, a lot of hard work went in this summer and it's nice to see the results. You know, obviously you don't always get results right off the bat. So I've been fortunate to put myself in some good positions and capitalize on them but it feels fantastic. Coming up. Come on, Buddha. American Brian Bigley opens up in five questions. I had to fill out some media questionnaire and I thought there's no way anybody reads this. And we give you an easy way to improve your short game. Hi, I'm Alex Moon. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I'm a member of PGA Tour Latin America. Today I'm going to show you guys why I believe when a ball rests up against the rough, why I think a hybrid's better to use than a wedge. Using a wedge, you've got rough behind the ball and with a lot of loft and a leading edge as sharp as a wedge, a lot can happen. You can hit it a little thin and it's going to go too far, especially if it's a downhill shot like this, or it can catch on the grass and the ball will go just a few feet. So for me, I like to use a hybrid. This way, it can just slide through the grass nice and easy and get the ball rolling how I need it to. All right, so I hope you could learn a little bit from that shot and hopefully get some better scores out of your game. Thanks for joining me. He was a groundskeeper at a local course to help fund his golf career. 
Now he's inching closer to his PGA Tour dream. American Brian Bigley sits down to answer five questions. My dad's a golf course superintendent back home in New York. So when I was four or five, me and my brother would just tag along with him to work and started playing golf. And here I am 25 years later, still playing. When I was in college, my brother was on the team with me and we won the conference championship. So that was pretty fun. I don't think a lot of people can say that they won something with their brother. Guatemala was pretty neat. Where we stayed in Antigua, playing golf on the side of the volcano was pretty crazy. I liked it there. Mazlan was gorgeous on the beach. It's all a new experience. I studied Spanish in high school a little, and when I was in Charlotte, I worked with 20 Mexicans who were always making fun of the gringos in Spanish. And after eight years, you kind of pick up a few words, but uh, probably the most common phrase is una mas. It was Buddha for a long time. I wasn't expecting to be on this tour. He had played last year, and I had to fill out some media questionnaire, and I thought there's no way anybody reads this. So Michael Buddha Cavoli became my golfing idol. Come on, Buddha. I want to meet my idol. He just happens to be practicing while I'm just sitting in a chair. So hey, that's why he's my idol. Never lost those partners. Never lost his partners. Up next, we move to the Distrito Federal for a taste of modern Mexico with Alex Midi of the band Moenia. Esto es PGA Tour Latinoamérica. Acompáñenme a probar algo de nuestra comida. Esto es PGA Tour Latinoamérica. Amigos, ¿cómo están? Soy Alex Midi, integrante de Moenia, músico, productor, y eh, muy contento de recibirlos en mi ciudad, la Ciudad de México, que aunque un poco caótica, pues queremos, la amamos mucho todos los que vivimos acá. Acá estamos, este, pues qué mejor que empezar el día con unos, con unos tacos muy mexicanos, como todos ustedes saben. Eh, esto es parte de lo que pueden encontrar aquí en el, en el Mercado Roma. Recuerden, si están en la Ciudad de México, vénganse para la Condesa, la Colonia Roma, este mercado. Van a encontrar de todo de comer, muchas actividades, mucha vida nocturna también, que ya platicaremos de eso. Lo importante, lo único importante aquí es venir con mucha hambre, eso sí. Hola, ahora sí. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Oye, pues un pozole, como te había dicho, un poco más pequeño. Porque... ¿Princesa? Sí. ¿Con todo tu princesa? Con todo, sí. Gracias. Pues me dicen que este pozole es especial porque es una mezcla de tres chiles. Eh, básicamente este pozole es de la zona de Sinaloa, no tanto de esta zona del Distrito Federal, pero eh, que es una mezcla de, de chiles y de sabor a jengibre, que es una especialidad del chef de este local en específico. Buenísimo, pues ya me trajeron mi mezcal. El mezcal es una bebida que Rápidamente está reemplazado el tequila como la bebida de México. Se toma con naranja, con sal de gusano, por aquello de que las botellas de mezclar, de mezcal pues, llevan un gusano adentro. Algunos, no todos. Eh, y bueno, no te puedes regresar a tu país eh, después de estar en la Ciudad de México sin probar un mezcal. Estás viendo, esto es PGA Tour Latinoamérica. PJ Tour Latinoamérica moved eastward to the state of Mexico for the 56 Trans American Power Products CRV Abierto Mexicano de Golf presented by Heineken. The Club de Golf Chapultepec was the host course, the same venue for the very first edition back in 1944. Now, 70 years later, the competition proved to be hotter than ever as Jose Toledo found second round sparks with an ace on the 17th hole. 
but it was American Chris Gilman who held a four-shot lead heading into the third round. He opened up that lead to five shots with a birdie on the 12th hole. With the greens as good as they are, I feel like I can make anything out here. But that was the last birdie Gilman would make for the day. He shot a 69 to keep the lead at 16 under par. I felt like I hit it pretty solid on the back nine, just, you know, just didn't make anything. You know, I expect to win. I feel like I have a good game plan, and I've, I think I've executed it pretty well for three days, and now it's just one more day of doing the same exact thing. While Gilman was making pars, Colombian Oscar Alvarez was making birdies, four of them over his last seven holes to cut Gilman's lead to two shots heading into the final round. They will be joined in the final group by Nelson Ledesma of Argentina. Eh, desde que estamos en este tour, eh, no he tenido la oportunidad la primera vez. Una gran oportunidad, eh, primera vez que estuve en el torneo en este tour, pero la verdad que ya he ganado varias veces. Cuando era el tele ha ganado tres veces, entonces no es que sea nuevo para mí, pero muy contento de tener la oportunidad nuevamente. The final round figured to be a shootout between Gilman and Alvarez. Gilman was trying to become the first wire-to-wire -wire winner in PGA Tour Latino America history. The California native struggled in the final round. Starting with a bogey on the first hole, he would add six more and quickly fall out of contention. Also in the final grouping was Argentina's Nelson Ledesma, who charged up the leaderboard early with three birdies in his first four holes. Shooting a 31 on the front nine, Ledesma held the lead by a stroke at the turn. Alvarez continued to challenge with back-to-back -back birdies on 11 and 12. He then found himself in front by a stroke. Yo, yo pienso que el hoyo 11 y el hoyo 12 que hice verde y verde eh, fueron los que me dieron como mucho poquito de práctica que necesitaba. The two went head to head down the stretch. Ledesma took a share of the lead at 15 when he converted a birdie and Alvarez could not. But the tie didn't last long, as Ledesma would three putt the 17th, dropping back to 16 under, sending him to 18, one off Alvarez's lead. Ledesma lined up a birdie on the 18th in hopes of forcing a playoff. As it motored past the hole, Alvarez had two putts to capture the title. At 31 years old, the Colombian tapped in for par and became the oldest winner of the season. Muy contento, una alegría enorme. Eh, un torneo tan grande como este, el Abierto de México. Tan grandes competidores, un club como este. Me tiene muy contento, la verdad. The win in Mexico electrified Alvarez's season, vaulting him from 68th to 14th on the order of merit. Sí, ya la, la miro el ranking con otra, otra cara. Eh, quedan varios torneos y todavía queda mucho por hacer. Here's the order of merit after the first 12 events. The top five earn status on next year's web.com tour. One other note, Mexico's Rodolfo Casobon secured a spot in the OHL Classic at Mayacoba on the PGA Tour by earning the most money by a Mexican golfer in these two events. Up next, we rejoin Alex to see if he's as good on the golf course as he is on the stage. Yeah. See? That's what I'm talking about. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's so easy, isn't it? <laughs>
Do I that porque? Claro. Yeah, just open up your feet a little bit. Okay. There you go. Now look down your target line and swing to it. Yeah. See? That's what I'm talking about. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's so easy, isn't it? <laughs> Solid hit. You got a good swing. Well, both you guys. In the range, every, every, everything was like smooth, but it's always a little different. Yeah, course. and and with cameras and microphones, yeah. it's a oh, lot tougher. <laughs> believe me. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Say <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> Great shot. Maybe you should give me some pointers on that one. Gracias. Thank you, man. Ah, muchas gracias, muchas gracias hey, por man, el consejo. Thanks for the tips. Thanks for the tips. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, a, it's a pleasure to play with you. Same here. Thank you for letting me play with you today. Enjoyed it. Thank cool. you, man. You can find all the latest news, live scores, highlights, and interviews on our website, pjtourla.com. You can also engage with the tour and the players with updates, photos, and videos on our social media outlets, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Gracias por estar aquí conmigo en mi ciudad, en la Ciudad de México. Esto es PJ Tour Latinoamérica.